Well, hi, friends. Welcome to River Church Online Worship. This is Sunday morning. I'm Pastor Randy Caulfield. I lead this church, and we are meeting in person, but we're continuing to make this worship video because some of you are still isolating. You're not yet ready to get out, and we understand that. And I encourage you, do uh, what your heart leads you to do. If, you, if it's still time to stay home uh, for you, given your health circumstances or your situation in life, then I respect that, and, and, and I love you, and that's why we're making this video. We're about to get started with worship, but I encourage you to, right now to go get some communion elements, bread and juice, because we're going to be celebrating communion. Uh, go get your Bible, something to write with, something to write on. Uh, get rid of any distractions. Maybe put your pet outside or in another room and, and uh, fill up your coffee cup. Um, if, you need to, if you want to know uh, something about River Church, something new about River Church, maybe you don't know much about it at all, you can go to our website, uh, riverchurchrgv.com, and all things River Church uh, can be found there. All right, so get your stuff ready, and in just a minute here, we'll get rolling. So I want to tell you the story of a biblical character, St. Peter. Uh, he wrote a couple of books in the Bible. He was uh, the church, uh, one of the church fathers. He started the, the, church, the original church. Uh, he was one of the 12 apostles of Jesus. Uh, he was known as the Rock. Jesus called him the Rock. Uh, and he said, I, I'm going to build my church on you, Peter. And Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the spiritual rock of the church. But Peter was the human rock. And Jesus determined that's how he would build his church, by starting it with this church father, Peter. He was like the first preacher, the first pastor, the first missionary. But let me remind you of his former story, because it might seem familiar. Maybe you can relate, in fact. Uh, he was the rock. Uh, he was young and impetuous. Uh, Jesus had not yet been crucified. Uh, Peter thought he was all that. Uh, he was at the top of his spiritual game, he thought. He would tell Jesus, uh, he would tell him, uh, Jesus, I will never let you down. I, I will never uh, fall away. These other dudes, these other 11, they may fall away, but not me. I'm, I'm in it. Uh, I will never fall away. And then the inevitable happened. He failed. He crashed and burned. Um, the night that Jesus was on trial, just before he was crucified, Peter was beside himself. He was, he was scared. He was alone. Jesus had been arrested. Three different times that night around a campfire, other people, strangers came up and said, you're one of those, you're one of Jesus' disciples. You're one of them. You're a Galilean. And he would deny he said, I, I didn't know that man. I didn't know that man. And, and three times in his fear, he denied even knowing Jesus. Well, you know the story. Then the rooster crowed that night, and Peter was reminded that Jesus had prophesied and told him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he was crushed. His hopes and dreams now came, came falling. And he quit on Jesus. St. Peter actually quit on Jesus. That night, he said, I'm a loser. I'm worth nothing. Jesus can't use me. I might as well go back to my old job. And that's what he did. That night, he quit on Jesus. He quit on the community of faith, quit on his small group, quit on all of his, Christ all of his relationships, and he went back to Galilee and back to fishing, back to fishing boats, back to fishing nets, and the, the employees that he had, and he started up, he ramped up his fishing business again. And I suppose he determined that he would never go back to the church, back to discipleship, back to that spiritual life. He'd blown that. He had a chance, and he blew it. Until one morning, he'd been fishing all night. They had caught few, if any, fish. And then in the distance... He saw a small figure, it was Jesus, on the, the, the shoreline of the lake saying, throw your net on the other side of the boat. And they did. They threw their net on the other side of the boat and they caught too many fish for the boat to even hold. Well, Peter didn't care about fish. He jumped out of the boat, got himself all wet, and he waded to the seashore. And you know what he found there waiting for him? Breakfast by the sea. Jesus had made him breakfast. Jesus, Jesus had traveled all that way to, to reclaim Peter and tell him, you're, you're not worthless. 
You're not damaged goods. You're not disqualified. And he invited him back into ministry. He invited him back in. He said, you're the rock. I'm going to build my church on you, Peter. And that's precisely what happened. And now we have the church because Peter, the, the first pastor, he, he, didn't, uh, he wasn't disqualified. We, we have the church. We have two letters in the New Testament that Peter wrote. Here's what we're talking about today. We're talking about lessons from a man who left the community of faith and then returned. Peter left the community of faith, but then he was drawn back in. Big picture today, what we're talking about is the ugliness of isolation, going it alone in life, and the beauty of reconciliation, of, of living in community, specifically the community of faith, the church. Let's jump right in. First Peter chapter 5, this is a letter that Peter wrote to the church that was suffering, that was being persecuted. Uh, the Christians were being dragged out of their homes in Jerusalem and beaten and put in jail and put in jail for being Christians. And so they had fled. They had run all over the region and they were hiding out. And Peter writes to the suffering church. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. First Peter chapter five, it says this. And now a word to you who are elders. These are the leaders of the church. But I want you to know he's going to give us a word for the leaders. And then he's going to give us a word for the, the young people in the church, and then he's going to give us a word for all, all of us, all the rest of us. And he's talking about community, living in relationships. And now a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. He did. He, he was a witness to the sufferings of Christ. And I too will share in his glory when he revealed, when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. That's the word he has to the elders. You take care of the church. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, uh, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor, like a reward. Going on, in the same way, you who are younger, the young people in the church, must accept the authority of the elders. The, the instructions to the young people. And, and, and then to all of you, it says... Dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud. He gives grace to the humble. He's quoting a, a proverb. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. The word of the Lord for which I give thanks. Today we're talking about community, community in the church and, and its value and its, its, its significance, its purpose. You today may be suffering silently, suffering from disappointment, suffering from low self-esteem. Maybe it was a passed over promotion, a failed certification exam, maybe it was a job loss and you just feel like a failure. Perhaps you're suffering today in a bad relationship or a recent breakup, a love that is, has not been reciprocated. You may be suffering today uh, from financial loss or total ruin, bankruptcy. Uh, you may be suffering today because of illness, physical health issues. Maybe it's mental anguish. The source of your suffering today, it, it may be nebulous, like depression or crippling anxiety. Or maybe it's addiction. Maybe even one that no one else knows about because you've kept it well hidden. 
What I want to what I want to encourage you to believe today is that, that Jesus has given us the community of faith as a medicine. I'll tell you a story for me. As a young worship pastor, many, many years ago, I was working at a church and they loved me dearly. And, and I had this call, this invite to uh, apply for a, another worship pastor position uh, in, a, in a big city at a prestigious church and I did apply and I told my friends that I was applying and and it looked like I was going to get the job and it looked like I was going to get the job and then in the 11th hour it fell through and I didn't get the job and and it was a public it was public knowledge in the sense that the church knew my my current church knew what I'd been going through and I was embarrassed and I, I felt like a failure and, and and that for me was a turning point I could have actually quit the church, at least vocationally, at least as far as a job goes, and gone and gotten another job. But, but at that moment in time, my, my dear church, they welcomed me back home. They said, we are glad you're not going. We want you. We want you to stay here. We love you. you we need you. You're a value to us. And that, for me, was a turning point. When I was as low as could be, like medicine to my soul, was the community of faith. Right here at River Church, we have people suffering. Anxiety, uh, the anxiety of, of, of children who are wayward, and physical sickness. And some of us are navigating the waters of, of uh, watching our aging parents. Maybe unemployment, not maybe, we have some who are unemployed and dealing with citizenship issues and we have a great number of, of, of difficulties and troubles, troubles that, that are individual and, and often, unfortunately, go unnoticed because we go it alone. Well, today, Peter, he gives us a community recipe for dealing with suffering. Now, here's the back story. I, I gave it to you. Uh, just in, in a brief fashion earlier, but we can actually find it in Acts chapter 8. It says this, A great wave of per persecution began that day sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all of the believers fled, fled to Judea, fled to Samaria. A Saul was going everywhere to devastate the church. He went from house to house, dragging out men and women to throw them into jail. That's the significance of, of today's passage. So it begins with, with, with the Peter, the author, saying, so or therefore, here's a word to the church. You're suffering. You're, you're, you're going through a really tough time. Therefore, a word to the church regarding suffering and how God's care is wrapped up in the community of faith, the community of the church. It's, it's within the context of the church community that, that instruction in the Bible is, it's always worded. It's never a go it alone sort of religion. It's never that way. We always do life in community. So I want to talk about instructions to a community recipe for dealing with suffering. Three words. The first word is to the elders. So let's talk about that. Peter says to the elders, you are to care for the church that God has given you. Care for the church that God has given you. Now, at, at, at River Church, we have three elders, three pastors, elders, myself, Billy Garza, and Andre Zook. We, we were your three elders, and we lead, feed, and protect you. But, but we have other leaders in the church, and, and loosely, this is also applicable to those of you who are seasoned, mature spiritually. You're leading others, teaching a class, overseeing a Bible study. To the elders, care for the church that God has given you. You know what this means? It means that we're not to dream of the church that we one day hope for, but the one that we're living in now. That's kind of a struggle for everybody. Maybe you think, boy, it'd be, be cool if we, if we had a softball team, a bigger church with a, with a water slide. And, 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 and Paul says, love for, or love and care for, the church that, that God has put you in now. 
Specifically, this is a word to the elders, and so you should know that the ministry of the elders, caring for the church, primarily looks like this. We pray for you and we preach the word. We pray for you and we preach the word. James 5 says this, if anyone among you is sick, or is, any, is, is anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Our role primarily as elders is to pray for you, to pray over you, to pray for your well-being, and to preach God's word to you. Now, all evidence uh, we have from the entirety of the New Testament says that, that elders were widespread in the early church. Um, there were a number of elders, and they were leading and feeding and protecting the church. And so, so Paul, I mean Peter rather, in this passage, he gives the elders these instructions. Number one, do this, lead, feed, and protect the church uh, because it's God's will and not because you feel compelled. Don't lose your joy, elders. Don't do it because you're obligated. Do it because the Lord has called you, because it's the Lord's will. And then he says, number two, lead the church, elders, with eagerness um, and not for personal gain. Do it as a servant, not as a selfish person. Three, he says, don't lead in a domineering fashion. The church in America in the last several decades has, has had a real problem with pastors who are domineering and, 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 and uh, they just overwhelm people with their meanness and their bully sort of attitudes. And, and Peter says, no, no, no. Don't lead from a domineering fashion. And then the, the, the fourth instruction he gives is this. You do this, elders, and there will be future reward. See, what does he refer to it as? A, as like a crown. Elders in the church they will one day be rewarded. Um, they will answer. They will give an account for how they led. They will give an account for the spiritual health of the church, but they will also, in the kingdom of God, for eternity, be rewarded. We know that. Maybe today you aren't an elder, but maybe you aspire to be an elder. Maybe you would like to know more about what that looks like. I'd love to talk to you about that. So that's the word to the elders in this community of faith. Um, as Peter gives us a recipe for suffering, and that recipe is community. Next, he gives a word to the younger folk in the church, and we have many younger folk in the church, younger people in the church. And, and in the last three or four weeks, we've seen more young people come. I'm talking young adults, 18 and over, young adults come to River Church. But this also applies to youth, to our high school age and our middle school age uh, students here, and, and to, young, to the younger Peter says this, he says, follow well and value humility. Follow well. Now, now this younger perhaps could also refer to recent converts, people who are spiritually immature. And, 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 and the, uh, Peter says, follow well, listen to your elders. Listen, we live in a culture these days where there is a, a culture of low honor where we uh, are free to make fun of everyone and not value anyone, not give due respect to our elders, to those who are our leaders. The Bible cuts right across the grain of that, that poor tendency that we have in the United States these days. The, the Bible sets for us a high honor culture, is that we are to honor and value and, and respect our, our leaders. And Peter's calling young people in the church to do that. Listen, I'll give you a kind of a, 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 a picture of what this might look like, uh, an analogy, if you will. A, a teenager in the home. A teenager in the home. He's engaged in family affairs, comes to dinner, and goes on vacation with the family, and watches movies on the weekend with the rest of the family, He's fully engaged. He doesn't pull away, only hang out with other teenagers. He, he's engaged in his nuclear family. 
And this is the idea in this passage behind subjecting yourself to the elders in the church. The idea of get involved. Come under the leadership of the, the older people. Come under the leadership of the elders. Engage in the community. Don't just hang out with other people, other young adults that are just like you, and sort of a shared pool of ignorance. I don't mean that harshly, but, but hang around with older people. <clears throat> Follow the, the cue of the elders. Get to know all ages in the church and humble yourself in that sense and, and get to know. Learn as they lead, as your elders lead. Don't just go into your room and close the door like a boastful, ignorant teenager. What does that look, look like for you? Because we do have, we have many young adults in our church. It, it looks like uh, attend, um, find a place to serve, uh, join, meaning join the church, join a gospel community, open your home. Yes, as a young adult, you could open your home for Bible studies. Live in community, be financially invested in the church, don't just be an attender, but actually engage in this body of Christ, the community of faith, this family of God. And then the last word is to all of us. Peter says to all of you. And he says this, this, this beautiful phrase, dress yourself in humility. Now let me remind you what we're talking about today. We're talking about the fact that many of us individually, sometimes in isolation, we suffer. We, go, we are anxious. We go through troubles. And Peter is giving us a recipe, a community recipe for dealing with our suffering, going through our suffering as a community rather than in isolation. And so now he says to all of you in the church, River Church included, dress yourself in humi humility. You know the most humble thing you can do often is to make yourself available, to say, I'm not too busy. I'm not too busy for a relationship. I'm not too busy for the church. I'm not too busy to invest in the lives of others. I want you to know that it should concern us that there is no category in the Bible for the disconnected Christian. I'll say that again. It should, it, it should concern us that there is no category in the Bible for a disconnected Christian, a go-it-alone Christian, a Christian who's a lone wolf and isn't part of the church. He's just, just me and Jesus. I, you know, I can do church out, out on the bay or I can do church, you know, in, in the deer stand, but I don't need... No, there, I mean, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying that in the Bible, in the New Testament, that's not a critter that exists, a Christian who is disconnected from the church. It's interesting to me that when Jesus says in the book of Revelation that, that many of us have lost our first love, he is speaking, yes, of our love for him, but some translations also interpret this to mean that we have lost our love for one another in the church. Jesus says you have lost your first love. You're, you're, you're obedient, you're, you're serving, you're doing all the right stuff. He says, but I have this one thing against you, Jesus says. You've lost your first love. And he says, you've lost your first love for Jesus, this connection. He's the vine, we're the branches. You're not abiding in Christ, but he also says you're not abiding in one another. You've lost that first love. He says, Return, return to your love for me, return to your love for the, for the community of faith, the church. Yes, Peter calls us to dress ourselves in humility. And humility involves loving, relating, specifically relating to others who are not like me, who are not like you. You know, only relating to those who are, are like me uh, who, I, who I have things in common with, that's, that's not the church. That's a club. That's a club of like-minded people with the same hobbies and, and affinities and affiliations. We all dress alike. But that's not the church. I, I struggle with the, the idea of a church that's just for young people, a church that's 
just for hipsters, a, a cowboy church. I'm not throwing any stones. I don't mean to be, but the church is to be diverse. The church is to be a group of people that, 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 that really have no affinities other than Christ. They don't, there's not a shared, uh, shared hobby that we, you know, we're not all the same color or all even speak the same language, but we all are drawn together by Christ. Now, I have one exception when I, uh, when I uh, have a hard time accepting the idea of a church where everybody looks alike and everybody you know, has the same hobby and boats the same way. And there's one exception. I have a lot of uh, patience with it. It's, it's a sad detail of church history in the United States, and that is the black church. The black church was formed because they were not welcome in the white church. And that tradition and the scar of that, that truth, that detail in our history lives to this day. Let us work. Let us work to make room for all to be welcome at River Church. How do you affirm that? How, how do you make that happen at River Church? By engaging, by getting involved at River Church with everyone, those who aren't like you. Um, they're included in the all. Oh, that River Church might be a, a diverse church, a place where people from all walks of life, all colors, all ages are represented, and we're drawn together by the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the one thing that singularly that, that, that defines us and marks us. So what's the application here? Um, well, I want you to get engaged in the church more so than you have been. I want you to get involved at River Church more than you. I want you to live in community, not just come and attend Sunday mornings or watch it online, but I want you to be engaged in the community of faith in 2021. So in this next section, I'm going to talk about the, the, the offerings, the, the opportunities that we are, are rolling out and making available to you as we seek in 2021 to, to be more engaged involved in one another's lives as a community of faith. Okay, so here's how you can get more involved, engaged in the community of faith, River Church, in the coming year. I mean, 2021 is almost here. So in December, we're going to be uh, advertising and giving you every opportunity to, to sign up and sign in and, and get, uh, get connected and, and make your commitments. And here's what we're offering. Some, some of these are still being Formed, and so that some of the details are still to be determined. But, but one of the opportunities that we're going to have is that, that uh, Priscilla Russell and uh, my wife, Lydia Caulfield, uh, sisters, um, they are going to be leading a, a ladies group. Uh, they're going to be doing a through the Bible in one year study. So that's an opportunity for ladies to, to get engaged, to, 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 to get involved, to live together in community, make some friends. Uh, second opportunity is that uh, myself, uh, Pastor Randy, and uh, Victor Delgado, uh, we are going to be leading a men's study on a weekly basis. It'll probably be here at the church. It'll probably be in the morning um, before work. We haven't set that uh, in stone yet, but we're going to be uh, using the Daily Walk Bible and going to read through the Bible in a year. There's an opportunity for you men who have no friends to make some friends. Uh, another off offering is that... Uh, Billy and Elise Garza, uh, with the help of uh, Milan and, and, and Elena uh, Virial, are going to be um, leading a, a co-ed uh, gospel community. And it's going to be of all ages. Some young adults are going to be in there. Some older adults are going to be in there. It's going to be a cool opportunity for you all to meet in the evenings on a weekly basis. Um, we're also going to have a, uh, oh, oh, Andre and Susanna Zook are going to be leading a co-ed online a prayer night, community night, on a regular basis. And so if you're not ready to go into someone's home or, you know, in the age of COVID, you're not ready to actually meet uh, in person, you can meet virtually with Andre and Susanna in a co-ed uh, co online prayer night. Uh, we have a, we're going to have, a, we're going to continue to have a weekly community night online uh, like we have during the, the, the entire uh, six months of isolation. Um, there's going to be a, a gospel community opportunity in Los Fresnos, and those details are yet to be determined. And there's several other groups 
that are, that are being formed right now, and we're talking to some people, but we don't have all the details yet, maybe that's you. Maybe, maybe you got a great idea on how we can be connected um, in 2021. I want you to think out the bo- out, outside of the box. I want you to think about some new and creative ways in which we can be connected. Listen, I love you. I, I love this church. I want us to do life together. I want us to live in community like we never have before. I believe 2021 is going to be a great year and a year of community and connection. Love you guys. I invite you now to the table of communion. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he gathered with his 12 apostles and they shared a meal together. And it's so intriguing to me that he knew that, that in just a few moments, Peter would deny him three times, and yet he welcomed Peter at the table. He invited him in. He didn't judge him. He knew that he was going to the cross to forgive Peter and to make him new again, lest he has done for us. On that night, Jesus said to his disciples, from now on when you do this, knowing that we would be doing this today. For now, when you do this, do this remembering me. He took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks and he ate it. And his his apostles, his, his closest friends, they ate it. And he said, this is my body broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Yes, you too, Peter. And then, and then he held up the cup and he He blessed it and he gave thanks and he drank from it and the disciples drank from it. And he said, this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. From now when you do this, remember me, Jesus said. And so that's what we do, Jesus, with heads held high for you are not a victim. You are a conqueror. This was all part of your perfect plan to rescue and redeem and forgive and save us and make us right with God again. So we celebrate you, Jesus. I invite you now right there in the privacy of your own home, maybe you're by yourself, maybe with your closest family members, maybe maybe you're with a friend or two. I invite you to break the bread and, and drink from the cup and in so doing, celebrate Jesus. Well, friends, uh, that's a wrap. Uh, I want you to know how honored I am that you would invite me into your home virtually like this to lead you in the study of God's word. That just means the world to me. I, I uh, just so value the fact that, that I get to call myself your pastor. Maybe you're new to River Church, and, and I'm not yet your pastor. I would love to be. If you want to know something, uh, I mean, if you have any questions or, or you want to know more about the church or you've got a need, or maybe, maybe today's sermon really, really pricked at your heart. Maybe you are new to town and you don't have a church home and you're, you just want to get connected. Would you send me an email? Randy at RiverChurchRGV.com. Randy at RiverChurchRGV.com. If there's a way that I or the other elders, the way we can serve you or meet, meet a need in your life or pray for you, we would love to do that. Just send me an email. Uh, now's a good time for you all to, to go online and give. Everything that we do here at River Church is according to your good gifts wouldn't exist if you didn't give. And many of you, you give sacrificially, uh, you give extravagantly, you give in a way that you feel it. Like, like many of you, you give in such a way like, I could have used that, but I'm going to give it to the Lord and see how God might make good on his promise to reward me as a result. Um, so if, if you're not yet a giver, well, we'd love to see you become a new giver at River Church. You guys can go online to our website now and, and give. It's safe, it's intuitive, it's easy, uh, it's quick, it's kind of fun. Uh, many of you have been giving that way in this age of COVID, giving online, and we encourage that. And we say thank you. Okay, well, you go do that now. You go give online, and I want you to know that while we miss you here at River Church, um, in your presence we continue to pray for you and i i just am tickled that you join us each and every week virtually so you have a good day and i'll talk to you soon